In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins, our need for God's grace in our lives. We prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are counted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. When Hezekiah was mortally ill, the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came and said to him, Thus says the Lord, put your house in order, for you are about to die. You shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, O Lord, remember how faithfully and wholeheartedly I conducted myself in your presence, doing what was pleasing to you. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, Go, tell Hezekiah, thus says the Lord, the God of your father David, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. In three days you shall go up to the Lord's temple. I will add 15 years to your life. I will rescue you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will be a shield to this city. Isaiah then ordered a poultice of figs to be taken and applied to the boil that he might recover. Then Hezekiah answered, asked, what is the sign that I shall go up to the temple of the Lord? Isaiah answered, This will be the sign for you from the Lord, that he will do what he has promised. See, I will make the shadow cast by the sun on the stairway to the terrace of Ahaz go back the ten steps it has advanced. So the sun came back the ten steps it had advanced. The word of the Lord. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. Once I said, in the noontime of life I must depart. To the gates of another world I shall be consigned for the rest of my years. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. I said, I shall see the Lord no more in the land of the living. No longer shall I behold my fellow men among those who dwell in the world. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. My dwelling, like a shepherd's tent, is struck down and borne away from me. You have folded up my life like a weaver who severs the last thread. 
You saved my life, O Lord. I shall not die. Those live whom the Lord protects. Yours is the life of my spirit. You have given me health and life. You saved my life, O Lord. I shall not die. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus was going through a field of grain on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, See, your disciples are doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did? when he and his companions were hungry, how he went into the house of God and ate the bread of offering, which neither he nor his companions, but only the priests, could lawfully eat. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests serving in the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent? I say to you, something greater than the temple is here. If you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned these innocent men. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. We hear today the prophet Isaiah tell King Hezekiah that the king is about to die. And we sympathize with the king's prayer to God where he wept bitterly. We also feel hope in ourselves Then, when God says to him, I will heal you. I will add 15 years to your life. Hezekiah will be okay. He will not die. But eventually, King Hezekiah did die. So what happened? What happened? Well, the reading from Isaiah here is filled with facts, with uh, precise numbers and descriptions of how Hezekiah is to avoid death. But... Uh, We read it wrongly if we stop at those words on the page. We have to go deeper. We have to go deeper into their meaning. For example, the 15 years added to Hezekiah's life is a symbolic number, that 15. 15 points to the reality of rest in uh, Jewish numerology. In other words, Hezekiah's life in death will be filled with rest from his struggles. And then five times we hear God say, I, I have heard your prayer. I will heal you. I will add 15 years. I will rescue you. I will be a shield. Five, again in Jewish numerology, five, is a symbol pointing to the reality of divine grace and favor. In other words, in death, Hezekiah will be with God. God's grace will hold him up. Hezekiah did die physically, but he died into God himself, into the divine life itself. And that faith and vision given to him by God is what Hezekiah's peace about death uh, comes from, surrounded by these uh, these symbols, these numbers, these uh, signs which reveal God's embrace of him. How could Hezekiah feel anything but comfort as he entered death and fuller life with God. And we Catholics have the symbols of the crucifix and the altar, both of which point to the reality that Christ is here with us on earth, walking with us from death to life. And of course, we have the greatest sign of them all, God himself, present in the Eucharist. Surrounded by these signs and symbols and many others which point to a reality greater than we can see or fully know. We can face death and even the ordinariness of life with the assurance that the living God is with us. God, the
the creator of life itself is with us. Ultimately, our peace about death rests in the person of God alone, the living God, who surrounds us with signs and symbols and reminders of his real presence. God is with us. God is rooting for us. Therein lies our peace and our hope. God with us. Emmanuel, Jesus, our Savior. My brothers and sisters, once again, we offer to the Lord our prayers, our needs, and the needs of the entire world. We pray for all the faithful that their peace and hope in God's saving grace will be confirmed and will serve as a light of hope for others. Let us pray to the Lord. For our country, that truth will overcome falsity, that cooperation will defeat competition, that love of ideals will return, all for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are actively dying and their families, that they turn to their creator with hope and prayer and find peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are ill with COVID-19 or any other illness, both spiritual and bodily, that they be healed through both science and grace, let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of people, including church leaders, that they be innovative in finding ways to reach out and minister to their people, let us pray to the Lord. And for all the faithful departed, and also for the living and deceased members of the Don Pierce family for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, in the spirit of faith, we come to you with these prayers spoken. We also lay before you all the prayers that are in our hearts today. We ask you to receive them and, as always, to answer them according to your goodwill. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the, the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are 
hearts full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.